now we know how to do the finite range case. If we go to the appendix C, there's something called a monotone class theorem. That is actually, this is how Kalle is uh, sketching the proof uh, of the extension result. So uh, in the end, a monotone class it's a collection of functions. No, no, it's a function class which contains the function one, the constant function. It is a vector space, so it's closed under scalar multiplication and addition of functions. And it's closed under increasing limits of non-negative functions. That's what the monotone class of functions means. And there's something called monotone class theorem. This is often attributed to Sierpinski the Polish mathematician. Um, and the statement is here, if you have a monotone class of functions which contains the indicators, so if we have a monotone class which contains the indicators of every set in some pi system, then this monotone class actually contains all measurable functions in the sigma algebra generated by the pi system. Okay. To absorb this statement is actually, um, it takes time. So it's a statement which I'm not sure if it's worth using the time so long. I used a lot of time to understand this uh, statement, but it's something that you don't need so often. So when you don't need it, you forget it. And, and um, But uh, I, I mean, it's maybe good to know that it is there. And with this monotone class theorem, so that's the key to proving finally this, um, this um, let me see, where is this? Um, this representation theorem. No, wait, yeah. The representation theorem is there. Uh, the monotone class theorem is there. And with that, we prove the, um, with that, we can prove the Dube's theorem. So here is the proof of the non-trivial part. <clears throat> the proof starts um, of the, um, the proof of the Dube's representation theorem starts with assuming that there's a bounded Z. And actually then there's the case that we assume that um, we have an indicator. So Z is actually the binary random variable. And this is the part of the binary proof that we did already very carefully. And that's what we know. Then the second phase is to show that this is actually the class of functions that behaves well for this theorem is actually a monotone class. So there's a pro proof that, okay, the unit is trivial. The second property is that uh, we have a closed uh, stable under addition and scalar multiplication. And that's actually essentially what we did already on the, on the whiteboard. The remaining proof is that we assume that we can approximate Z with a monotone limits. And that's what we can do with these finite range functions and we uh, approximate. And then for every finite range function, we have this representation that there's some function Fn, which is Bor Borel function. Then we prove that these Borel functions actually have a limit and they converge also. And then this limit of uh, measurable functions is a measurable function again. So F is measurable. And that's why um, these limit properties uh, actually can be used to show that uh, Z is, uh, can be represented in the limit with this F. And, and that requires, um, that can be done for very, ge very general cases, but uh, for bounded variables. Then final phase is to go from bounded to unbounded and um, that's uh, the way to do it, for example, to use any kind of uh, continuous bijection of the real line to a bounded set, for example, to Arcus tangent or something else. In machine learning, you have this, uh, how would you call this function? I forgot the name, but the machine learning people have a different name for this type of uh, bijection. This is a really quick sketch of the proof. We conclude here um, about, uh, representations and sigma algebras. This is also the conclusion of the sigma algebra and measurability stuff, kind of the really the dry stuff of probability. And now we have kind of the technicalities that next week we can start to do 
a real probability, meaning something related to independence and probabilities and computing probabilities.